And welcome back to the hot We are talking F1 big 2024 changes. Fairly significant, I think. Looking at sprint changes, DRS changes. We'll also be looking at the testing calendar, short though it is, when you can watch testing. Also, changes for Red Bull. Will they be good enough? I mean, they've suggested they're slightly concerned. And also a Christian Horner investigation update. Nothing major, but we may well know by the end of the week what's going to happen. So let's get into the significant F1 sprint power unit rule changes, all set for the 2024 season. This is from motorsport.com. And it's saying that the FAA published the outcome of their latest F1 commission in relation to their sprint, DRS, and power unit supplies. So we, as we know last year, people were unhappy about the Saturday in the sprint formats and that is very likely going to change. Namely, it says here the scheduling and they're offering teams more of a chance to change their car setup before they go into park Fermi conditions. That means um, what happened last year, for example, was after the first practice session, you went to sprint qualifying on the Friday and then the minute you went to qualifying, park Fermi after that one practice session, which is why some teams, uh, Red Bull did a lot, I think, in 2021 and 22, get it. You sometimes get their setup slightly wrong. Um, other teams did as well. Like I think Mercedes. Um, just think of Brazil, for example. That was horrendous for them, wasn't it, last year? So alongside those plans that are going to be in place, um, also to activate the DRS. Those DRS lanes are going to be activated not after two laps, but after one lap completed, following a start or restart instead of the previous two. Now, I'm assuming that's uh, also upon a restart after the safety car as well on one lap. So after the opening lap of a Grand Prix, it's DRS will be turned, you know, it's going to be turned on. So also significant 2024 changes. Um, they still need approval. Um, and that's going to be the next World Motorsport Council. It's going to be on February the 28th. But the scheduling of the F1 Sprint has seen another tweak for 2024, as we just spoke about. Now, having had a Saturday set aside for the Sprint as a self-contained day, we used to call it Sprint Saturday, with qualifying for the Grand Prix on that Friday, it will now change. And qualifying for the Sprint will take place on the Friday, which I think makes a lot of sense for people, because a lot of people missed qualifying for the main race on the Friday, because... Uh, they were at work or coming home from work and that leaves the option to change their car and also we've got the option to change their car sh set, set up sorry set up after the sprint race which will be on a Saturday morning and then you will have the uh, Grand Prix qualifying later on on that Saturday so after the sprint race that's uh, the park Fermi conditions are essentially open and the teams if they want can make changes what's significant about that I think is we saw a lot of races uh, for sprint races. Is It's kind of just like a preview for the big race. And nothing much changes. For example, go back to Brazil. Mercedes struggling on their struggling on their tyres in the sprint race. And struggling on their tyres in, in the main race. The same thing, I think Red Bull also have, have had issues, I think, in the past 22 Brazil. Which um, they could potentially change now. And as you can see here, you've got free practice one on the Friday and sprint qualifying, then Saturday sprint and Grand Prix qualifying, with Sunday being the Grand Prix. The six sprint weekends uh, that are due to take place are in China, Miami, Austria, Brazil, Las Vegas, and Qatar. So fairly similar-ish to last year, some of them, but we don't have Spa. I think it was Italy's sprint race last year, I forgot. But there we go. That's a, but that's basically the main changes going into 2024 as we speak. But next up, next up, let's look at um um from that was from planetf1.com. Sorry, that story. This story is from motorsport.com. And Red Bull are saying they're unsure if their third evolution will be good enough. I think it will. I think maybe they are the only ones that might not think. But hey, that might give a little hope to people that aren't particularly Verstappen, Perez, or Red Bull fans. So it says it is unsure if it has done the right thing in sticking with a third evolution approach for its new RB20. The Milton Keynes squad um, is due to reveal next week uh, their Formula One car. And off the back, as we know, the most one of the most dominant seasons in Formula One, it's well aware that there's little reason to do anything dramatically different. But Adrian Newey, as we know, the wonder wizard... Um, of designing cars. He's mindful that while it's been the benchmark so far, its decision to simply hone the concept may not necessarily be enough. Now, speaking to the team's Talking Bulls podcast, Newey said, our car is very much a third evolution 
of the 22 car. It makes sense. It's the best car. Last year's car was an evolution of 22 in its main points being, of course. And he went on to say that the normal winter development in terms of aerodynamics, some understanding on what we needed to do with suspension to try and improve the car as well and getting weight out of it because we never got down to the weight limit in 2022 and where a lot of people think that's one of the not the main but one of the big differences that the 23 car had over the 22 car and it allowed for um like more weight you can put more weight ballast if you wanted to um the setup can be slightly different but it, you know that was one of the big advantages that the 23 car had this year's car is the third evolution of the original RB18. What we don't know, of course, is the, th is the third evolution too conservative, while others have done something different. You just don't know. I think Red Bull are going to be fine. But new comments about there being no clear direction on whether Red Bull have done the right thing comes with him admitting that he was completely surprised last year about how far ahead his squad was. He said the RB18, the first car to the new regulations, I think we managed to get the fundamentals right in terms of how we approach the research process and the architecture of the car in terms of its layout and so forth, he said. We managed to come out with a decent car that we then developed through 22 and obviously had a strong second half of 2022. But he said in 23, so now the second season of those new regulations, we completely expected the grid to close up. Sadly, it didn't. So last year took all of us me most of all, by complete surprise. We really didn't expect the domination we had. This year then, from what I understand, a lot of people, a lot of our rivals have taken a look, a good look this time, he's saying, and I suspect there'll be quite a few cars that look very similar to our car. In relation to the performance ring, it says here, while Red Bull won all but one race last year, as we know, Verstappen dominated. The grid was tight and the races were getting tighter. He said, Austin, we were going to lose that. So he took a gamble and pulled Max in to do an extra, stro extra stop and Max did the rest. He said, Vegas, to be perfectly honest, Probably Charles in the Ferrari was the quicker driver. Max made the difference there for sure. And he says, so by the end of the season, although we managed to win everything bar Singapore, everybody was snapping at our heels. So it doesn't make much of a swing over the winter now. So there's a lot of pressure. Nui explained that while there'll be benefits to the team, uh, to the uh, team taking designers, tasking designers to try and look for more radical approaches, the cost cap prevents some chasing. And this is one of the bad things about the cost cap is... If a team is behind, it's gonna it could stay behind for that whole set of regulations potentially, um, but then the cost cap also the big benefit is it, it keeps all our teams in check. Um, as you know, we can't go spending loads and loads of money, but that's gonna be really. It's interesting that even the best in the business, Adrian Newey, has doubts. Let's say I don't know how credible those doubts really are. I just think it's someone on top that knows they should be on top that's slightly paranoid because they don't know how fast all the other cars are i hope like many do it's going to be a lot closer next year and i think it will how close we, it remains to be seen and how close really we won't know till that bahrain qualifying so more red bull news though is um from motorsport.com date set for christian horner and red bull meeting after the inappropriate behavior allegations so red bull and horner they go to meet this friday in relation to an investigation into the allegations of a, of inappropriate behaviour. Red Bull's parent company, Red Bull GmbH, apparently, they confirmed to PlanetF1.com on Monday that they have opened an internal investigation into the team principal, Horner, but they did not reveal any details at this stage. And why would they if it's a legal, you know, a legal case? They said, after being made aware of certain recent allegations, the company launched an independent investigation. We know that from basically the other day. But the meeting is going to be on the February the 9th, and uh, in regards to the investigation, Horner's position as team principal and chief executive of Red Bull Racing Stable uh, during the, uh, is potentially could be under question during the process of the investigation. I mean, I hope... And Horner has served as Team Red Bull bus, as we know, since they joined the grid in 2005. And Christian Horner, he says, I completely deny these claims. So I guess stay tuned until Friday evening. I imagine, as we said yesterday, Red Bull really want to sort this out before they get into their launch. Last but not least, um, how to watch F1 2023 testing. Here we go. Dates and times. The 21st, 22nd and 23rd of Feb starts at 10 a.m. British time. That's at GMT, Greenwich Mean Time here in the UK. Session ends at 7 p.m. And obviously, I think they have a lunch break as well. Um, the Sky Sports F1 channel, you'll be able to watch testing. Last The last couple of years, they've only... The, uh, 
um, didn't show all the testing, did, did, did they? But I think last year there was only one set of testing days like this day, which is interesting. Um, so they're going to look, yeah. So, I mean, the question's there. This is from motorsport.com. I'll link it. I'll link it in the description. But we'll have a full on testing preview, though, probably in about a week or in, in about a week. But there we go. That is your F1 news for today. If you made it to the end, like and subscribe if you can. And we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much.